I know what you're thinking. Matt has finally reached the bottom of the barrel. Amen. <laughs> I'm glad to be here tonight. Celebrate Recovery is an important part of my week, uh, and that's because of each of you all. Uh, and I want to share just a little tonight about why I'm here and, and how I got to uh, Celebrate Recovery at, at FUMC uh, uh, and all. But <clears throat> if you hear nothing else in the next 20 minutes, Please hear these words from the Apostle Paul that come from Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Amen. Did you hear that? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And skipping up to verse 35, it continues. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. What great news. Amen. What great news for each of us is that there is nothing that we can do that God won't love us. <clears throat> I'm proud to be a baby boomer, a child of the 50s. Uh, and I probably have a little company out, out, out there. Uh, but the, the 50s seemed like a, a simpler time. Maybe it was because uh, I was young and naive. Uh, uh, and the only thing that's changed is now that I'm old and naive. But uh, <laughs> it, it, maybe it was because... Uh, we didn't have information and communications that just continually keeps us plugged in. Uh, but it was a it was a, a great time. The the only real problem now is that there's not enough room on the birthday cake for candles. Uh, <clears throat> One of the great things about the fifties and early sixties was music. The music was fantastic. Uh, <clears throat> You know, at that time, we, we still had uh, some of the big band sound from our parents' generation. Uh, but coming along at that time, too, was the blues uh, and, and soul music. Uh, country music was gaining much more popularity. Uh, and then there was also uh, a phenom called Elvis uh, at that time. Uh, and for uh, if, if you're here fairly recently, there was an Elvis spotting here at CR several years ago. <clears throat> All that was centered in Tennessee. I mean, we, we we've been fortunate here in this state, uh, from from Memphis clear to Bristol. Uh, that music. One of the best songs that came out of that era was a song by Sam Cooke. Uh, and, and it's entitled, A Change Is Going to Come. And the, the first verse of that song goes a little bit like, like this, as far as the lyrics go. I was born by the river in a little tent, 
Oh, and just like the river, I've been running ever since. It's been a long, long time coming, but I know a change is going to come. So many songs from that era dealt with our struggles and troubles. And that's what gathers us here tonight. We're, we're, we're bound together by our struggles and our troubles. <clears throat> A little background, uh, again, as to why I love Celebrate Recovery. I was born by the river. Uh, in a very small town, just, uh, oh, a few minutes from here. Uh, and I've, I've always said it was a great place to grow up. Uh, I, I remember we had really good, not, not perfect, but we had really good mentors uh, in this, this town. Uh, and, and they took the form uh, of parents, uh, clergy, uh, teachers, coaches, uh, we were very fortunate to, to have some guidance uh, in, 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 in these times. Uh, <clears throat> I don't remember struggles early on. And again, maybe that comes back to that youth and, and, and being naive. <clears throat> I was part of a large family. Uh, there were grandparents, uh, cousins, aunts and uncles uh, on every corner uh, in this town. And, and I, I remember we seemed to have a lot of freedom. Uh, we'd get up in the early mornings, ride bikes all over town. We played uh, sandlot ball. Uh, we'd hike down to the river, spend the day there. Uh, but it was great because we were never more than a block or so away from a, a meal or a handout. It was also, it wasn't real good because I didn't realize it at the time, but there were a lot of eyes on us. That was probably why our parents gave us so much freedom. <clears throat> My life was happy and healthy. My mom and dad were, were mostly faithful. Again, not perfect. Uh, but church was a very integral part of our life. And it was a very important part for that community. Mom and dad were loving, supportive, very interested in anything that I was doing. Uh, and uh, it, was, it was a good time. Uh, I was the middle child between sisters. And so I learned at an early age that great trait of patience. <laughs> but as I was finishing high school, uh, I noticed a change in my dad. I uh, couldn't put my finger on it, but... Uh, he was a little different. Uh, he was still uh, very active. He worked regularly. Uh, he took us fishing and camping all the time. He, he never missed a game that I played in uh, or any activity that, that, that I was involved in. He, he was always there. Uh, but, but there was a change. Uh, and it, it, uh, it finally... Uh, uh, dawned on me that that change was alcohol. Uh, and alcohol was beginning to, to take control. Uh, it began to render him uh, uh, incapacitated. Uh, and it changed his personality to, to being very belligerent. And he was not that type of man. Uh, <clears throat> He became a dad that I didn't recognize. I finished high school. I did go on off to college. Uh, he was very supportive at that time, uh, even visiting uh, and spending some time there. Uh, but when I 
visited home. Some of those visits became very tense uh, uh, and disturbing. I did finish college and then I came back home and I moved in with my parents. Uh, part of that was uh, to help my mom maintain her health and sanity. She was the rock that stabilized our family. Always was, always will be. Dad continued to spiral down. And more often than not, he was non-functional. I have a very vivid memory of my feelings at that time. I felt completely alone and helpless as to what to do. I wanted to shake him and say, Dad, enough. I wanted to fix that. But it didn't seem like I could do that. <clears throat> I was angry at his choice to drink as well as his behavior. And again, I was helpless because I was embarrassed to share that with family. I was embarrassed to share this with friend. And I was alone because I didn't know where to turn. It was, it was the greatest sense of isolation I have ever experienced in my life. You know, 50 years ago, uh, we didn't know as much about alcoholism, substance abuse, uh, mental issues as we know today. Uh, uh, and, and how great it is and how far we've come in understanding this illness uh, this day and time. Back then, again, it embarrassed me that my, my dad was an alcoholic. I didn't want to share that with anybody. Uh, it, it was considered a, a moral or a character flaw, not an illness. <clears throat> Mom and I leaned on each other and, and began to seek help. And we finally found a chapter of AA. And as we began to understand more about alcoholism, a sliver of hope returned. A sliver of hope returned in my life. <clears throat> but still, the next several years were a roller coaster ride. Uh, highs and lows. Uh, as Dad tried to, to, to get sober. Uh, and there were times of success and then times of relapse. I want to share one experience during that time that, uh, that I still remember like it was yesterday. I was home. It was a weekend afternoon. I was making plans as a, as, as a young guy to, to go out and join some friends and uh, go to a movie or go to the park or, or whatever. Uh, and my dad was... Uh, <clears throat> was staggering, falling down drunk. So my mom and I decided that we would take him to a facility to hopefully dry out. I called my brother-in-law and he immediately came over to help. And at that time there was only one facility on the weekends that would take anyone like uh, uh, to uh, in, into their facility. Uh, <clears throat> it was in Knoxville, so we made a plan. Mom and I packed a, a, a little overnight bike, and then my brother-in-law and I literally carried my dad and poured him into the back seat of the car. Uh, one of the lowest points of my life. To see my dad, uh, who had, uh, again, had been a hero of mine, uh, had been a, a great dad uh, in this 
particular condition. Uh, it was devastating uh, to me. <clears throat> we got to the facility and, and got him into the facility and the, the attendant there told us, said, now, if you all will wait out here, we'll get him in his room, admitted and all that, and then we'll have some paperwork uh, uh, and all. So we, we did that and, and we were uh, uh, waiting. I don't know, it seemed, it seemed like forever at that time, but it was probably only 20 or 30 minutes. But the attendant finally came back out, <clears throat> handed me a 12-pack of beer and a pint of liquor, said, your dad won't be needing this. Folks, to this day, <laughs> to this day, we don't know how that ever got, how he ever got that in that facility. Mom and, Mom and I had packed the bag, and we had to carry him in there. But anyway, it's one of those stories I look back on that I can laugh about now. But I was not very amused that day. Over the next several years, Dad <clears throat> went to treatment facilities, but always relapsed. But for some reason, he kept going back. And the last time he went in, it took. And my dad was sober the last 25 plus years of his life. Now, Well, that's not it, but I carry a chip of one of his in my pocket daily to remind me uh, of, of my dad and of his struggles and of his success uh, and all. Uh, <clears throat> when he died 20 years ago, uh, I've, I've always had a chip in my pocket uh, to, to, remember, to remember that. <clears throat> His was a success story. All of us here today know that those conditions and situations don't always end successfully. We all have been touched by tragedy. Mom and Dad helped found the first Al-Anon in Loudoun County and worked there for many years. And that was such a great uh, resource for us in understanding this illness. Uh, and it touched many more lives down through the years. <clears throat> now I continue to this day dealing with my own hurts, habits, and hang-ups. And I also deal still to this day with friends and family in that situation. So not much has changed in that time. But I'm getting to my point. When First United Methodist Church here in Maryville first launched celebrate recovery, I was not initially involved. <clears throat> but six years ago, I felt God tug a little bit on my heart uh, and decided to come to a, a training event here. Uh, I'd heard so many good things about celebrate recovery. Again, I'd heard so many good success stories about celebrate recovery. And we have some folks here tonight that were a part of that launch. And, and, and our gratitude uh, uh, goes out to you all uh, for establishing this great program. <clears throat> but I immediately, after the training session, signed up to be a volunteer. 
But I signed up as a volunteer to set up tables and drive the van. Celebrate Recovery wasn't for me. I was going to volunteer, help support. After just a few weeks, someone invited me to a small group. I said, why don't you, why don't you attend a small group and, and, and understand what they do? So I did. It made me realize that our struggles are universal. Amen. That if we are honest, hurts, habits, and hang-ups touch every one of us. Amen. It doesn't matter the struggle, whether it is grief or anger, uh, control, pride, substance abuse, or whatever. And it doesn't matter if it was a personal struggle or that of a family member or friend. It hurts. And it hinders us from living our best life. After only a few weeks, I had a revelation. I found out that I looked a lot like everyone else here. And everyone else here looked a lot like me. We all had a hurt, a habit, a hang up. We're all broken and sinners and all in need of a Savior. Amen. I quit as a volunteer. I became a participant. I got on the journey to recovery because I knew I needed it. This, this program is for me. That's why I'm here tonight. Recovery, I realized, was a journey that I needed and that this community was the one that could provide that support along that pathway. Celebrate Recovery has all the characteristics of community. Healing takes place here. This community welcomes, embraces, celebrates our common brokenness and gives each of us a sense of belonging. Oftentimes when I'm asked to present or give a devotion or whatever, I'll start with a question. Try to get folks' minds working. I'm going to end with some questions tonight. Where would you rather be on a Wednesday night than with a program that serves up food and fellowship in heaping portions? <laughs> Feeding and nurturing our body and our soul. Where would you rather be on a Wednesday night than a program that provides inspired worship, lifting up our praise with music and message? We, we, might, we might turn this song over to the band one of these days and, and, and let them sing that. Where would you rather be on a Wednesday night than a program set up in structure and in discipline? measured and tried steps that guide and heal. And where would you rather be on a Wednesday night than a place offering Jesus Christ? Amen. 
Walking arm in arm with believers who struggle. But are assured of Christ's presence here. Of His Spirit here. And that each one of them is forgiven. That each one is loved. That each one is healed. And that each one is saved. I don't know where you'd rather be. I don't know anywhere I'd rather be. And I'm always excited to join you in this recovery journey. I know they're not hearing this, but if you're not, if you're not coming on Wednesday night, come join us. If you are here, Keep coming back. Amen? Amen. As the band uh, starts back up, <clears throat> uh, I, I want you to hear that, uh, those last four verses of Romans one more time. Uh, because again, it is the love of God that truly makes a difference in our lives. Uh, <clears throat> And at verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Tribulation or distress or persecution or famine, nakedness or peril or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers nor things present, nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen and hallelujah Amen. to that good news for each of us. And tonight as the band closes out. Again, I will remind you of a chip. Uh, we have these uh, on, on each of the speakers. And if you would like to come and, and take one, uh, if it will help you know that you are on the path to recovery. If you want to get one because you remember someone who was on the path to recovery, like my dad, uh, come up and get one of these. Take it with you and let it be a reminder that nothing will separate us from the love of God. Amen. Amen.